councillor Carl Austin Bean and Annie Wallace. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the candlelit vigil here in what is the heart of the spiritual part of Manchester. And this is what Manchester Pride Festival is all about. It's a pleasure to see you all, and please give another round of applause for the Manchester Show Choir. Now, education equals equality has been the theme and the message for this year's festival. From the class of 2017 graduation parade, which saw thousands of people take part in an education-inspired march through the city on Saturday, to now, the candlelit vigil, where our message is loud and clear. As Annie has said, education is key. It's key in all formats. The thing is, the George House Trust, Manchester Pride's charity support organisation, is part of that. And it's about educating, it's about helping and supporting, and it's about the work that they do through the communities. Manchester Pride, as a charity partner, works tirelessly with the George House Trust to educate people about HIV and about the stigma and about eradicating the stigma and it's about the people living with HIV on a daily basis and we can help and support them. Now George House Trust is one of the organisations that benefits from your support. So whether you purchased a pledge band or you dropped a few coins in one of the many buckets as you came into the gardens this evening, or over the course of the weekend, the, your donations all go directly to the Manchester Pride Fund, which is then distributed to the LGBT and HIV causes across Greater Manchester. The heart of this event is a charity, and that's really important, as well as the party. I would like to thank each and every one of you for your incredible support over the last few days and previously. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. As we all know, Manchester's gone through a really tough few months. We have. We've, it's been, it has been tough, but you know what? We've fought back. We've been resilient. We as a city have worked hard to make sure that you know we will be resilient on hate, we will be resilient on, on things that come against us, we will fight back and we are an amazing city and we do things fantastically brilliant and we are an amazing city in that way. One thing I will say for all those people out there who do try and bring us down, hate will never win. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, please give a very, very warm welcome to your host for this evening, Mr. Daniel Brocklebank. Good evening, Manchester. I trust you've all had a suitably marvellous few days. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Annie. Oh, what a beautiful sight this is. Um, it, it really is my absolute privilege and pleasure to be here with you all this evening. Um, standing in front of a community who stand together, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, as we gather for the most poignant part of Manchester Pride Festival, the candlelit vigil. It's so overwhelming to see so many faces here before me lighting up Sapville Gardens and I'm sure some of you like myself are feeling a little wilted after a, a few days of enjoyment so it really is wonderful to see so many of you all here this evening for what really is the spiritual heart of Manchester Pride Festival. Now as you know Manchester Pride's campaign for 2017 is education equals equality. 
And uh, the big weekend has highlighted the importance of education in all its forms to help eradicate discrimination, hatred and intolerance. And as Carl just said, this year, Manchester, our wonderful, proud city, was subjected to the most hateful crime. A crime so abhorrent that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's affected each and every one of us here. Now, the intentions of this crime was to divide us, to divide communities, to pit the proverbial us against them. But in true Mancunian style and spirit, it did the complete opposite. It brought the people of Manchester together. It made us stronger. We embraced our neighbours. We put faith in complete strangers. We learned that love and hope and kindness flourishes even in the darkest of times. Thank you. Education is key to helping us understand the differences that exist between us. It provides us with knowledge so that we can make informed choices. It challenges our beliefs. It helps us to understand, accept and embrace. Now the George House Trust has been educating us for many years to help eradicate prejudice and discrimination, helping us to understand HIV. That if diagnosed early and treated correctly, people with HIV can live long and healthy lives. They've also taught us about the stigma. Yes, woo! They've also taught us about the stigma that still exists around HIV and the prejudice that people living with HIV still face from day to day, not from our own community and beyond. They've also taught us that undetectable equals untransmissible. That people living with HIV who have a sustained undetectable viral load cannot pass HIV on to their sexual partners. And they're teaching us about the changing times of HIV, including advances in research, and medicine and their lifelong commitment to challenging HIV stigma and discrimination. So, this evening, with education being our theme, education equaling equality, I'd like all of you to take something away from this vigil, something away from this weekend that you can take away that can benefit others, that can help educate them, that can make a difference, that can help challenge, intolerance, and indifference. Let's have a think about it. Take something away. Now this evening we've got uh, a, a number of guest speakers uh, who in one way or another have helped make a positive change to the life of others. Their stories are courageous, inspiring, and equally heartbreaking. Now tonight as we stand here, we also remember those who are no longer with us. We remember those who are suffering, those who cannot speak out, those who are persecuted for simply being their true selves. Our LGBT brothers and sisters around the world who are fighting for equality, to simply be loved and love in return. Now, obviously, a little later on, we will be lighting our candles and observing a minute's silence to remember those that we have lost. So, can I please kindly ask that you don't light them just yet? So, with your help, we're going to turn Sackville Gardens into an ocean of flickering light for everybody to see. Now, it is my great pleasure to welcome on stage our first guest speaker. He is a trustee of George House Trust, 